lot of brilliant talk from Elon. Um, he has already talked about allowing developers to to speak and to share their, their thoughts and their experiences. And that's one of the things we are, we are really encouraging. So to begin with the presentations, okay, let me give you a little bit into how we, we got we got to select these topics. So we, we allow people to register on our website and also to submit the title. So um, we expect that people would submit. I mean, at, at first it wasn't, wasn't coming into a work like it. So we would we went if the people wouldn't submit in after week. But eventually we got more than the stores that we had. And it was good for us because we were able to, the, not we, the committee was able to to see and then know which topics are best suited for developers. And now, so I, there are some members of the committee here. Um, Rinka, can you please give us a break? Okay, so Rinka is the, the chief technical officer at BT Ottawa. Um, and then one more member of the committee, Samalako. Can you also give us a break? All right, someone is, is currently a, student, a second year student at Mace um, with a degree in maths, right? Yeah, and he's given us a kind of a so um, it's so these are there, there are five members on the committee, but as the as the, the, the other three come, I'll introduce them. So um, without much ado, I'll call on Nina. I just got the name right this morning. I'll call on Nina from Bisoko to come and talk to us on Bola. just didn't cut it for them, considering the things C++ does. I'm sorry uh, if I you know, had a jump right into it. I'm sorry. Right, so Go was built in 2009 by these three people, Rob Pike, Robert Bissima, and Ken Thompson. For those of you who follow these people, you know that this guy is a god. This guy, I'm not a god. This guy, uh, some poor old guy, I don't really know him. But you have all these people working on a project, and when God meet, it's like, I want my thing to rule. In the end, they came up with a language which had nothing, absolutely nothing, very bad, right? So simple that you could build anything with it. And this is a reflection of Ken Thompson's Unix philosophy, which says that build modules to be simple and do one thing effectively, and then combine these models by using enablers. In the Unix time, that would be pipes, processes. Okay, so this is what we have. A systems level language, which is simple, statically typed, and then it feels dynamic, really fast and really simple. Clean, too. Okay, so what are the axioms of Go? Go language is about simplicity, maintainability. You need to have code that is simple to write and easy to manage, because if I leave this company right now, who is going to manage my code, right? It should be such that anybody who comes in will just jump right in and get stuff working. And it is fun. Um, yes, you can do that. Who says you can't? Okay, Go is about orthogonality. Orthogonality means when you change something in a module or something, it doesn't affect anything that depends on it. That is the, you know, the golden standard for every software developer. Orthogonality. You know, make sure that when you change something, nothing breaks. Hands down, go that. And also, organizing means there's no bloat, you know, you don't have stuff you don't need. Readable, oh god. Well. You should really see some go code, you know? It's like reading a novel, it just flows. You don't have to try to comprehend the technicality behind it, just a little context, and then you can make sense out of go code. 
And this title really should read fast everything. It shouldn't be fast build. Goal is like this fast. My boss always says, that goes fast. Every time he clicks the button, that goes fast. <laughs> Every time he clicks run, that goes fast. You, you should just be in our office when he's doing that. It's just beautiful. Um, a little back note on uh, how I go to Google with help. So I came into the company looking for a new language to learn. And I was going for you know, Python, those kind of stuff. And then my boss was like, then go. And I don't know sense. So what are the features of Go? Go is statically typed, as every system's language should be. Go is compiled, which is important if you want to achieve fast running time. And then Go is type safe, you know, and memory safe. And especially Go is garbage collected. Everybody knows the benefit of garbage collection. Then we have concurrency from inception. Like we said, Go was built for Google, and Google works with these massive stuff, so you need things to work concurrently. You don't need to write code that is, you know, hard to maintain because concurrency really, really exacts some really crazy syntax things on your code. Go makes you write sequential code that can write, you know, can run concurrently. Okay, and it's built for the web. Where the web is equal to Google. Support for functional programming. There are Python people in the house, please put your hands up. JavaScript people in the house, put your hands up. See? Functional programming is We ring, we ring. And we have, it is OOP. Object oriented, but not in the way you, you, know, you can't expect OOP to work. <coughs> Go is about duck typing. If you walk like a duck, a duck, you talk like a duck. I mean, you quack like a duck. You crawl like a duck. You do anything like a duck, then you're a duck. Mark Davis. <laughs> Am I a duck? <laughs> cool. And then explicit dependency. If you've worked with C, C++ before, you know what um, if not devs are like, the C process attacks, if not defined, include, you know, it's just basic hell, including dependencies in C programming. So there was this time, one of the Google developers came across a problem. There was a single file that, that got included like 47 times in this build process. Now you think that's cool because it doesn't really get included, but it means that 47 times this file is read and dumped. 47 times, processing time wasted. And if you have really huge source files, you really can cut a lot of, you know, wasted projects at times out of that. So explicit dependency, Go makes you tell it what it wants, I mean what you want, and it respects what you want. And it trusts you to do what you said you would do. And that's one thing every system level programmer respects. We all love C for that. C, like my boss says, is like, this is the gun, this is your foot. <laughs> you get shot in the foot anytime you try so. So, it's time for a demo. A little demo we all have heard of is the Hello World program. Hello World. Mm. Uh, how do I open it? Um, the Mac users, please come and help me. <laughs> I, don't use I know. <laughs> okay, so um, I have this file. I want to make. Yeah, yeah and then open it in a text adventure. Yeah, not that sure. It's going to be consistent. This hello world in Go. The beautiful thing about Go is that it's not just about the language, it's about the entire environment. So this play Google, I mean playground, what you do is you take code, you put it on Google servers, it runs, you test it, you try, you share code using playground. Um, if we hit the run right now, please hit the run and let some people see the the numbers. Okay. One will think that this should come up. Now let's analyze a simple Go program. We have the package main which means that everything which starts in this file, which has package main, belongs to this package. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you what our package is. And then we say import font. This is the library that does standard output, um, standard inputs, general stuff you do with, basic things you do with the language. And then function main. How many people, does this look like C if I may ask? It does? Does this look like JavaScript? You see that thing about Go? Try to put a systems level powerful programming language and make it look simple. Orthogonality, simplicity, readability. So we just say font main, 
and then everything in main is the first thing that will be executed when the program runs. So this is our hello world, um, hello dev conference 2013 for everybody to see. So that's how a Go program looks like. Moving on. Uh, uh, Mark, please. Right, so which one, which one? The slide. Thank you very much. So that's our demo hello world. And then, quickly, the things I love about Go, and the things I believe any developer here would love about Go. It doesn't matter whether you're from an object or programming language background or a systems level. Simply tight. Like, and Go uses inference to determine what you want to do. It doesn't say specify everything you want to do. Take a look at a sample code that, uh, uh, where is this thing? This one, try to go. Yeah. Sample declaration of variables in Go. You will notice one important thing about Go and the fact of what I mean by simply type. Yeah. Take the type stop. Thank you very much. Now, this is how you declare integers in Go. In C, C++, Java, you know, you'd expect that would specify that int i 1 or JavaScript, Java will say int i is equal to int into brackets, some weird stuff. Go just assumes that this looks like an integer, so it should be an integer. Go knows that this is a float, so you don't have to tell Go stuff it knows already. It just infers and then you're working. Now this is smooth. This is really smooth, right? And it looks like JavaScript, doesn't it? It looks like Python. And look at this string assignment. Try assigning a string in C or C++. It's just crazy. Look at the function assignment. This says that mall is a function that accepts two parameters, x and y, and they are both integers. And then look at this. It returns the multiplication of that. It's just smooth, straightforward. One of the reasons why you should get go. Slide, slide. Thank you very much. Okay, so inference saves a lot of repetition. We've seen that, and um, I love Go dates. How many of you have tried to do date processing with JavaScript? How did it go? Can be hectic. Yeah, yeah, it really can be hectic. Actually, it is a pain. Okay, very much. It's a pain. Dates. See how Go does dates. So, assuming you want to import a date into your Go, you know, your Go program, all you have to do is two things. You specify the layout in which it is coming, and then just call pass. That's all. Immediately you call pass, Go would automatically pass it and give you a date object. And then you can do your dot, date, dot hour, dot time, dot anything. Check this out. So, this says that the data, the date information you're expecting is in this format. Time to pass the layout. This is the time you want. So this is the layout, this is the current time you want, right? Print line. Please hit the run for me. And automatically, it creates a time object for you. You note, I didn't specify that um, it's of type time, stuff like that. I just said print line, passing the variable t. It passed it and then just prints the, front, the object for you. Smooth. You can do any processing you want in that slide. So that's dates in Go, and I love it. It's just simply specify the incoming format and then call pass. Go does the heavy work for you. How many of you have wished that a programming language had multiple returns? <laughs> Go does, Go does, Go does. Look, I'm totally not so about Go, right? And you would be if you try. Okay, so multiple returns. It's a simple example. This has been a classical problem every new programmer has experienced swapping two variables. Like, I enter two um, values and then you swap them. And see how good that is. Yeah, this is really a issue. I'll let me use Google Present. <laughs> There's actually a tool like that, Google Present. And then it presents your slideshow for you. You can run code and enter everything. 
But these guys are gonna do it. <laughs> right. Okay, so I believe anybody looking at this could tell me what it is. Look, call a function swap, accept two integers a b, return two integers, swap a b. Which one? We have to like about that. Like really. How many times? And Go uses this a lot in this one libraries to return error messages and uh, actual return values, you know, so it makes the language more hard to clean and stuff like that. So it's like You know, the rate of people are going with me, I mean, give me more time. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> okay, so multiple returns. Go packaging is awesome. There's actually a documentation of every package in Go. You just go to your, your site, golang.org, so PKG, name your package, and then everything about the package is there. And beautiful, public private interfacing. In Go, to specify that a component is public, all you have to do is change the case. Immediately you see an uppercase letter, it means it's a public interface. You don't need to go and type public. Saves you typing time, and then everybody who reads it knows what they're talking about. Don't type it. All you need to do in Go, create your structure, declare functions in an interface, let your structure implement these interfaces. Okay. Everywhere you can use that interface, you can use a structure. Go to that type it. Oh, structuring. How many times have you tried Java? That says, um, new, um, hmm. New I I O utils dot something dot something dot something dot something plain. I I can't even remember. It's been a long time. I'm sorry. Go eliminate that by just being a one-time thing. You know, bang bang bang. No touching. No no come on. I don't miss that. Command line argument processing. How many times have you worked with C C plus plus command line argument? C C plus plus command line arguments. How does it go like get up, eh? Oh, it's crazy. With Go, it's just, there's a function, flag. Just call flag.int, flag.string, flag.something, and then it knows that anything you pass through on the command line will be assigned to appropriate variables. Do you have an example of the stuttering? The stuttering. Okay, I love Java, I love Java, I love all of them, so I won't mention it. I didn't make an example to that. Okay, that's fine. So, concurrency. Everybody is about concurrency now. Erlang. Um, node. You see? Everybody's about concurrency. Concurrency is built into Go as primitives. And Go supports concurrency in the form of Go routines and channels. A proponent of CSV style concurrency is Rob Pike. It's always about communicate by sharing messages, not by sharing memory. Like, seriously, if you just want to be simple to maintain, just send messages. It's the easiest way to be concurrent. So just like the Unix um, find, you know, this finds the stuff you want. This looks for it. This passes it and gets the number of word counts, right? Pipeline, pipeline, pipeline. These does individual. They do individual stuff specifically built for them, right? And then you communicate by pipeline. Same thing with Go routines. You have a function that does something specific. And then all you have to do is say, send this message to whoever needs it. Yeah, an example of the Go routine thing would be very helpful. This um, Go Go. Thank you very much. Thank you. A very basic example of a concurrency in Go. So we have this function compute that does something, right? Compute will do some, please hit the play button for me. So, compute's job is to get a random number and send it back to main. So main says, let's create a channel. And go compute, they are very funny names here, go compute stuff. So this will call the compute function concurrently. And it will continue working, waiting on a channel, this channel. Compute to do its computation, send it back on the same channel that we're waiting for, and when the result comes, it can process it and work with it. Very simple concurrency structure. And you notice, this looks like exactly you know, sequential programming. There's no special syntax in there, just straightforward. Okay, that was fast. Thank you very much. And 
So don't communicate by shared memory instead. Share memory by communication. Okay, so these are the things that we are going to talk about Go. That makes Go an environment. Like I said, Go is not about the language. It was built by Google for Google, meaning that it must be efficient, highly efficient, right? So they came up with this thing, Go font. How many times have we had serious arguments about the not, you know, tab sizes? Like, I like eight, my boss likes four, you like two. Go font takes that out. Code in any style you want. Call Go font, pass in the correct arguments, and to format it for you. So you can do your own thing, and at the end, call Go font, and you know how many arguments, everybody's happy. Okay, Go docs. Go docs allow you to document your code in the code. All you just need is a forward slash, forward slash, and your documentation, and Go doc will pull it out for you. So it's easy to maintain your documentation alongside the code. And then Go doc has a web interface. You just go to golang.org slash docs, and then you get it. Present, the tool I wanted to use here. It allows you to write Go, you know, talks, and then run the code embedded in the talks. You can just get it by, just go get talks. Okay, there's Go Play, which I've demonstrated, where I was showing the sample code and running them. And then there's Go Get for downloading packages, tools, source codes, anything you want to get. Now, if you import something in your code, but don't specify, you know, you don't specify where you get, you just specify the URL. Go, go allows you to specify the URL. For example, I have a package, um, Go Logs. It is at github.com slash go slash go logs. I just do import in my source code. I just do import github.com slash, if it is not in my package or my local directory, Go will automatically go online, pull it, and then build it with your code. Quick. Go fix. If you have changes in your file, in your, your, your source code that should you know, spread over everything, and it's huge, really huge change, that's called Go fix. It will do everything for you. So basically, Go is a tech, you know, an environment, an entire environment for Go. And also, everybody hates Go. Why? Go violates a lot of programming language design principles. Like, if you really go look for Go hate talks, you see a lot of them. Because Go is about working, not about theory. Okay? Go is about working stuff, not about theory. And if you go on a Google group for Go, you see a lot of such things. So simply put, well, I'm worshipping all my idols there. Rob, Pike, Ken Thompson. So, and Go has pointers. Pointer lovers. Pointers. You don't have pointers. Come on. Any like that doesn't have pointers, I don't like. Now, Isoko. I want to take the thunder from my boss. We can come and talk about Isoko later. So let's just say that I work at Isoko and we use Go at Isoko. Isoko provides weather forecast to clients. We register for it, we send daily weather forecast alerts. This is managed by the systems team and programmed by the engineering team. We use Go to get the, the, the requests, get the data, and then send it to our clients. Basically, we use Go to power that. We have a Nagios plugin, Text SMS, that we use to test that alerts are really received by our clients. Text messages are received by our clients. What do we do? We automated the test. We just have multiple phones that listen and register for alerts. Go post all these phones to make sure that these things have really received the messages. And then we update our Nagios. Red means bad, green means yes. And then you see that in our office. And price requests are also powered by Go. API benchmark. API is a core of this local. Engineering guys will tell you. But we as systems have to work with it too. And we use Go to benchmark the API, which the engineering people do, but we also do to keep our green things green. And transactions, you know, eventually benchmark. More information on Go. So please visit golang.org and tell the golang.org for more information on Go. And then you can practice everything you want there. Tours and tutorials, you may find other talks. Beautiful. You can actually do this. Go get code.google.com slash go.talks. And you see every talk ever organized by the Go team from Google. From the years 2010 to 2013. Talk about community, talk about sharing, talk about environment. And then the present tool can be gotten here. And more and more YouTube videos. You can join the Go community, my favorite. Go on nuts. They really are nuts there. And then you see Go Plus on Google Plus and then Twitter. Check out the Go blog there. And thank you very much, I'm Ina from the circle. That's how you are. Thank you. One thing, I, again for you. I hate Max. <laughs> um, can you please give it up again for you? Okay. Can we ask questions? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Sorry, sorry. So the, the, uh, it's important that we have user adoption for the success 
Currently, Google is a major, major mm -hmm. for Go, but then we have small companies also using Go. For example, um, Heroku uses Go for, um, I forget exactly what it is, but it's for the load balancing portions. And apart from Heroku, there are some other people, I guess I'm not really sure, but we have loads of small, small companies using Go too. Yeah. So it's really not popular, but like, yeah, it's starting out. People find out and they like it. Yes, please. You can see that we also embrace so some aspect of JavaScript, Python, and others. Is it a server side program that we do? Correct. Um, although it's a systems level programming, nowadays systems is not about a single machine, it's about multiple machines. Eh? You need to be able to work with multiple machines simultaneously, basically, so it's a server side thing. And you can actually write web applications in Go. I'm sorry I didn't mention that, but if you go to App Engine, there's a Go option. And I didn't demonstrate the Go. Um, web service thing because I can't really run it there and they won't allow me to do it. Yes, so it's a web server, um, server site language. Yes. yes, sir. So for libraries, one of the main reasons why a language becomes popular right. is because of its uh, range of libraries. Yes. So can you come and compare with Java maybe? No. Yeah. Go is nowhere near Java when it comes to site. Like I said, Go was started by a single company, so yeah. their libraries are really about them. So you have networking libraries, really up there. Cryptography, really up there. And then basic standard input output, basic is up there. But there's also the option of people writing their own libraries and then just sharing their links. Okay. And then you just do an import their link and then you're good to go. Well, as long as there's a community building. Oh, so it's a strong okay. community. Yeah. Oh. yeah, you'd love them. Last question. Please. Yes, please. No, not for me. No, okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Since 2010, right? Yeah. Um, can you give us an example of uh, a really cool project that has been developed by Google? Okay, um, DL, dl.google.com, where Google really, really set their, their heavy files are downloaded from. Originally it was written with C++, but with time, patches and things going in there, it became really messed up. So what did they do? The Go team went in there, rewrote it in Go, and then everything you download from Google, Inspired by Go. Yeah. Under my bless. <laughs>